Then I'm going to talk to you about some flyback drivers that I've worked on over the last year or so. Anyway, first one that worked pretty well was using a single 3055N transistor, and it's like a blocking oscillator type setup. Got really good output, not too much heating. The second one is almost the same as that, except it uses two transistors. It's a push-pull type setup, really good up output, and both of those work off at 12 volts. Then uh, next one I've worked on, and you can see these in earlier videos, is this uh, 30, This is actually a uh, ZBS driver, and that one produces a lot of output, some seriously strong um, sparks, basically plasma arcs is what you get out of that thing. You can burn through glass and metal with it. Today I wanted to talk to you about these, and that's the subject of today's video. And these, both of these use 3055 drivers. So we'll go over the first one, which is that one. That was my first attempt. Not, not very successful. But anyway, um, it does work, and uh, let's show you what's going on. Okay, then this is my first attempt at a 555 flyback driver. And uh, it's based on a tutorial um, on a YouTube video. It's J.P. Connor, uh, 555 flyback driver tutorial. And that's the circuit right there. Hope you can see that. It's not very clear. But anyway, uh, that's the 555 um, timer right there. And uh, got a, a 1 microfarad capacitor. And all the resistors in the circuit are 2.2 kilo ohms. And those determine the frequency and pulse width output of this um, setup. What I found when I was doing this is I kept blowing my kept blowing my, my 555 timers. I went through about five of them. They kept overheating and then blowing with this setup. And the voltage that were that I was using was about nine volts. And I cut it back to six and got almost no output. So at nine volts um, I was blowing the 555. So what I ended up doing is putting a 55 ohm resistor uh, between the flyback input, which is uh, that one goes to the positive rail, that's uh, pin number eight, and the positive rail, as you can see there. So that 55-ohm five, five, that resistor is in between the positive rail and the pin eight of the flyback. So anyway, here it is, and here's the resistor. It's actually a couple of 27 ohms there. So it's a couple of uh, 110s are connected together. And let's see how this thing works. So set up uh, all soldered together, put it on a small piece of um, perf board, and uh, found that was the easiest way of putting this together. I did test it on a breadboard before doing it. So, and I put a, a variable resistor also added that. Basically, that one is in between this 2.2K right here and the pin 7. It sort of sits right in between that 7 and that where these two come together. And uh, that helps me to change the, uh, the frequency. So let's switch this thing on. I'll put a switch in it too. Turn this on. You can hear it going. There's a little neon bulb connected to the negative output. This, uh, this, trans this uh, transformer has like a uh, diode and a capacitor in it. So there's the output. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, show you how I can change the frequency by adjusting this little trimmer. So we're going to do that right now. So that makes it go down. Increase. much lower.
All right, well, that's my first one. I'm going to try seeing the effect of increasing the amount of power going into that 5 by 5 on what effect it will have on the outputs. We'll do that right now. I'm going to put another resistor in parallel with these two. I'm going to put like a 10 ohm and see what that does. Okay, here's my resistor. Increasing the input into that 5 by 5 let's see what that does. So I'm getting better output. Okay, we'll try and increase, uh, increase the input into it some more and see what that does. Oh, for one ohm resistors. We're basically getting almost full input into that. So let's see what, what happens. I hope it doesn't blow my 555 as it has been in the past. Not really messing it up that much. I've got full input into it. Let's see what happens now. Last time I did this, it blew the um, 555. Seems like it's giving me some output there. Here it goes. So not bad. Anyway, so that's my set up based on the 555 tutorial. And let me show you the next one I've been working on. Okay, um, the next drive I tried turned out to be the more successful one. This one is um, just a slight modification because it, I didn't have all the parts. But anyway, here's the circuit diagram for this, this one. And I uh, just switched out like a capacitor, uses a 555 transformer. Um, the resistors, I didn't have these exact values. Another ca capacitor was switched out. I didn't have that wrap value for, the, for this cap. So just some very uh, minor changes in this circuit. But let me show you how this thing works. And I think it turned out to be a lot more successful than the, um, than the last one I just tried with the... Um, u 808 transistor. So what I'm going to do with this one, unlike that last one I put like about 9 volts into it, this one I'm going to put 19 volts. So um, you get this thing, I've got a, a power supply here. These things are really great because these are regulated power supplies and if you short them, you know, it auto disconnects, auto cuts out, so you, don't, you can never blow it. So anyway, here we go. We're going to connect this thing up and uh, put a little neon bulb here just to see that it's positive. I've got it all on a breadboard. Here's my um, transistor, which is an IRF830, and I put a little uh, aluminum heat sink on that one, just to cool that one off. So I can connect it up. I can hear some output there. Let's track check it with this little needle. That thing's lying. Okay, let's see what the output of this thing looks like. Oh yeah, that's some great output on that. Turn this thing off just a sec. Since this has a capacitor in it, this one is also a rectified output. There's still some residual charge in it, so I'm just shortening that out. What I did is I took, um, I think it's like, let's see how many turns I've got here. This is uh, like um, maybe 14 gauge uh, Litz wire. They got like one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, about 14 turns of that on the primary. I'm not using the, the built-in primary. I find this, this setup works a lot better in terms of output. So there you go. That's the uh, setup on this. And it works really successfully and I get quite a bit of output. I think I just said the word 3055 driver. What I meant was 555 driver. So it's a 555 timer based yeah, I driver. I just increased the voltage of this um, 
power supply to 24 volts. And we'll see what that does in terms of output. I got, um, I got it all set up here. And let's look at the, the arcs. I think it's going to heat up the uh, this transistor quite a bit, so I'm not going to run it for long. But you can do this thing up to 30 volts, pretty much. But uh, the best seems to be around around 19, 19 volts. That works really great. All right, here we go. Can you already hear it sparking? It's nice. Oh, look at those arcs. Major output there. It's very hot. Probably my first form of work. I stay up very long ago. I'm going to just show you this a little bit. There you go, that's uh, 24 volts. And we'll turn this off before it blows my transistor. Let's feel this. That's warm, it's not that bad actually. It's starting to warm up. But there you go. So, 555 timer based uh, flyback um, driver circuits. Thanks for watching.